Okay, this says, this says live, so let's see. Okay, we are not appearing on the YouTube channel. Uh-oh. Did we get everybody right, the wrong so YouTube? We are live. Um, let's see. We're not appearing on the proper YouTube channel, so. Uh, let me. Appearing let me on your channel? Yes. Just a sec. Well, we have four people um, in here. Let's see. We're not we do? Appearing. I see 11 yeah, so people. We're in a different chat. I see 11 different... waiting. Here, let me give you what I see the link. is 11. In the chat. <laughs> That's how, many YouTube, how, many YouTube, how many YouTube's links that you create, Jess? <laughs> like nine. I don't know what to do. I'm afraid to close anything because I'm afraid I'll... Uh, Okay. Just don't close the window you're on now, your hangout window. Right. I won't close that. I'll, uh, I'll post this in the in the group. <laughs> a little bit okay. of uh, kind of behind so, the curtain action. Uh, okay, here. good. This is how we figure this stuff out, even though we've been doing this for a year. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Everything's working. Yay. All right. So you Look posted the link to the yeah. new room? Yeah, I put the link in our chat. And then I'm going to post it on the group right now to give everybody a uh, heads up. I do have a box sets thing there <laughs> that has a new address and a new address and another new address. Jesus. Okay. Man. It says watching right now. Obviously not doing phone. Okay. You can start it. You know, I'm just going to post this in the group for everybody. Hmm. I'm having technical difficulties. It's not these guys. It's the silver fox that's having technical difficulties. I weep with shame. Just is still learning the internet. <laughs> I didn't even get my box sets out yet. I'll have to. Take... <laughs> I was like busy banging out all this stuff. Like, ah, oh, frick. <laughs> all right. So how about yes, you can go ahead and uh, get your box set stuff set up. Oh, actually, um, this do the intro and stuff. You can get your box set set up. Okay. After that. Me and Omar just talked about our Vegas trip. Well, <laughs> welcome to Omni Bros Live, where the old guy doesn't know where he's doing, and the two young guys make fun of him constantly, which is what he deserves. Tonight we are. <laughs> my name is Omni Dog, and I'm. Joined... Right. That's the best comment <laughs> about the AOL CD. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just as AOL hours ran out just before we started the show. <laughs> I'm joined with Omar from Near Mint Condition. Hey, guys. And Gabe Infinity Watch. Yo, what up, all the crazy people in the chat and everybody from the group? Okay, so I will see if I can find what the proper YouTube channel is. And, and we're sure the camera's switching. The camera's switching. In the group in about five seconds. Let's see. Let me ask if the... Jess has the picture lock. No, I don't. <laughs> Damn it. Let me ask if the picture's locked. <laughs> yeah, I don't, don't think it's switching. I'm looking at the YouTube channel, so. <laughs> no, it's not locked. Shit. It is on the YouTube feed. Like, it's not locked on the Google Hangouts, but. God damn it. Yes, as always. Uh, I hate my life. Everybody just wants to see Jess's face, I guess. Yeah, I you're guess. good. You're good. I'm going to switch manually, man. I'm going to do it live. You're crazy. Say that again because they didn't see you say it. <laughs> I said you're crazy. Okay. Are you, what, you, what, what are we going to talk about first, Gabe? Wrong Omar. <laughs> I tagged the wrong Omar. There you go. There's that guy. Are we still on? Yeah, we're on, and I'm switching manually oh. so that people um, don't just see me. I'll switch manually. I swear yeah. I was working at one point. I said you're crazy. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, that was. <laughs> okay. So, why don't we start with our hauls for this week? And, uh,. Why don't we start with Omar? What if uh, because the camera's on you right now? What did I get this week? Uh, Transformers Phase Two Volume Six. 
I'm almost done with it. I've already read these before, and I'm rereading them again because they are that fucking awesome. Uh, this collects the Dark Cybertron saga and also the four uh, Windblade miniseries. Um, I also got in... Uh, where is it? Ah, there she is. Low by Rick Remender. I haven't read this one, so I'm excited to read it. I went for the DCBS variant edition. And I got in Nightwing Rebirth. Nice. So this I, I got in Grayson last week, so I'm excited to read those back to back. Um and I'm currently catching up on Nova, the Sam Alexander Nova, because I didn't give those guys a fair shot because uh, right after the Thanos Imperative, like the Co Marvel Cosmic Saga kind of died to me for a long time. So I held a grudge for about four or five years and I'm finally giving them a shot. You know, somebody, another Nova other than Rich Rider. <clears throat> um, and they're okay. They're better than the Guardian, the Bendis Guardians, but it, it's, it's not bad. <laughs> Uh, they're saying I should double click on something, but I don't know what I'm supposed to double click on. And Gabe said, I got something you can double click on. <laughs> He's nuts. Uh, okay. Gabe, um, do you want to go over what you hauled since you all now, um, you work in a, um, comic book store. So you get your stuff before we do now. I do. I, I am now complete scam. To, <laughs> I'm now able to photo bait and video bait everybody like the day everything gets released. So that's what I did earlier today. No, wait, I did it yesterday. Let me pull it out. I don't have it in that order. Uh, the Deadpool and X Force omnibus, mm. also known as. Volume two omnibus, if you really think about it that way. Also known as Cable and X Force Volume Zero. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Whatever would work Cause, better. Because you know it's coming. Dude, if they do a cable and X Force after this, I am on it. Like Oh shit, I'll buy the whole fucking run as long as if they precede it with somebody else. I don't care who it is. Yeah, dude, all they need, uh, dude, if they're gonna give us more cable, like that cable series is fantastic. That's a very underrated series, is that cable series. Um, but yeah, so this is really a good book. It's pretty, it's not super thick. Uh, a lot of, there's getting a lot of hate on the dust jacket, but I think the dust, dust jacket's pretty cool. And, uh, some great 90s comics in here. 90. Including, including, where is it in here? This saw it. Here you go. The ex Extreme. Extreme. Adam X. I forgot about that guy. The guy was supposed yeah. to be the third Summers brother. Yeah, dude, everybody was supposed to be the third Summers Brothers. I think Damn. Storm is a Summers Brother. Damn time. it, Extreme. Then it turned out some douchebag named Vulcan turned yep. out to be the third Summers Brother. Yeah, it's a random ass character he just made up that was lost in space. But dude was like but, half Shi'ar, too. Um, yeah, no, Vulcan's a bad motherfucker. That, that goes without saying, but it just, it's just kind of convoluted that he's a Summers Brother of all things. I think the last time I saw him was like during Mad Fraction's run in Uncanny. He was just like in the background getting yeah, hit in the head. He's a big part of the uh, Realm of Kings storyline and everything, so that's always cool. But Extreme is cool because he has a backwards baseball cap. That's super 90s. <laughs> and if I remember right, his power set was he, if he cut you, he can make your, blo your, your blood boil inside your body. Super cool book. Uh, I'll probably be doing a review of this later on my channel. Or if you're on the Omnibus Collector site, uh, you can probably see the uh, – the photo bait I did for that. Also, uh, what else came out this week? Oh, I got a couple cool things actually as well. Uh, DC Rebirth Detective Comics Volume oh, One you, hardcover. You suck. <laughs> <laughs> I switched them. I switched Did to you? me just so I could say that you that suck. Was, I getting it way before the rest of us. Oh, yeah. I get this stuff way before you guys. No, not way. Well, way before you guys do. I get it the day it comes out. Look or, at you. Before it comes out, actually. Not to brag or anything. Mm. Just brag. 
Mm. <laughs> well, this has, I love the cover for this book. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's nice. beautiful. Yeah. It's very nice. It's a, it's a very slick, like very sturdy feeling hardcover. I mean, it's a small hardcover, so of course it's going to be pretty sturdy, but this is just a beautifully painted uh, Batwoman. Who's on the other side? Yeah, some, uh, just some guy. I don't know who this is. Daredevil? Yeah. <laughs> like this one, like the, the wraparound doesn't quite look as nice or really work well. But, you know, it is what it's fine. No, that's, yeah. that's well, good. Fine. Look at all this fucking blank space right here. Like they could have done more. Like they could have put Clayface or Orphan yeah. or a Spoiler or something like that on here. But I've read the first couple uh, issues of this already. It's, it's really good. I'm digging it so far. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm hooked on that series. That's one of my favorite so, Rebirth series. That's a great, great series. Um, oh, something else. If you guys, I don't know if you guys get this through IST or not, but this is something I think is pretty important for everybody to have. And it should probably be at your local, uh, your local comic book store. And all this is, is brought to you in part by uh, Torpedo Comics in Las Vegas. But they're, they're, they're handing out a, a DC Essentials graphic novels list. So what this is, is a small, what the hell just happened? Uh, it's a small, uh, almost like a trade paperback. But it shows you all the essential uh, uh, graphic novels available. Stores use this, you know, they should use this to order books for the store or give to their customers so their customers can say, yes, I want this book, I want this book. It's almost like another previews magazine, but it's all DC. Well, what's really cool about this is it's broken up by character, it's broken up by New 52 and by Rebirth. But where are we on here? To give you a teaser of what's to come? A little bit. Like they have um, the metal. They got a preview in here for metal. The hardcover for that. They got Vertigo stuff, Mad Magazine. Uh, a lot of kitty stuff too, like DC Superhero Girl stuff. But what they also have is a DC Comics reading order for trade paperback. Wait a so, minute. Hey, who's that order? guy? What reading <laughs> order are you talking about? What's up? What reading order? It says DC's reading order. Oh, jeez. You and DC. What? I love that you nonchalantly just showed up. <laughs> for, those of you, in here. for those of you wondering, this is um, formerly known as Hardcover Reviews. He's now Comics 101. He's also yawning man number dot com. Uh, this hey, is Luis. I've had a little bit of vodka tonight, so I swear to God, I swear to drunk, I'm not God, okay? So, uh oh, the drinking show has started. Hell okay. yeah. I've drinking and vodka. YouTubing. That never goes wrong. <laughs> I've had a bit of vodka, so I'm feeling pretty good tonight. How's everybody doing? Good, man. How are you? I'm, I'm hanging in there. Another day, another dollar. This show is extra brown this week. Holy shit, it is. <laughs> yeah, we got Jess right in the middle. Jeez, I'm outnumbered oh in this. Uh, I'm way outnumbered. I'm the minority. And I'm in, I'm in, in charge, so fuck you guys. I'm just, <laughs> just going to be me on now. Since, just I'm, gonna... <laughs> since I'm the technical director, it's just going to be me. I'm making the decisions. Yeah, gonna that's why I'm too late and messed up, too. <laughs> I want to see your green cards. Wow, there it is. There it is. You <laughs> need the airplane ticket I took to get here? <laughs> Shit, all, all you need is Geo now. We got yeah. all the Latino brothers. <laughs> and Riley's half Latino. Oh, yeah, that's right. That counts. Yeah, yeah but his, uh, his internet's as poor as uh, Puerto Rico's internet right now. Eric Stoffer says Vin Diesel. Dude, I've actually been told that I should cosplay as Vin Diesel. I was told that at one con, like one, no, two years ago. I, as somebody yelled at me, oh, shit, it's Vin Diesel. I was like, I'm just wearing a black T-shirt. What the fuck? I'm not Vin Diesel. <laughs> Talking a monotone. Hey, how's it going? Hey, how's it going? Family. It's about family. <laughs> I'm sorry to derail this whole thing. No, it's good to have you back. I'm a little buzzed, so. Even better. <laughs> it's been that kind of week. Is it, kind of, is it sad that I'm buzzed on a Thursday? No. Oh, no? 
That makes for a good Friday. That makes for a good Friday, right? I used yeah, to be buzzed the- every Thursday. Every Wednesday, <laughs> Tuesday, Monday, Sunday, Saturday. So, no, I, I am not the one to point fingers that somebody sure. buzzed on a Thursday. Yeah, I think I spent most of my 2009 and 2010 like that as well. <laughs> really? I'm spending most of my 2017 like that right now, apparently. Well, what Sorry. do you um, – what, no, we were talking about hauls, so I haven't uh, – Gabe, were you done with your haul? Nowhere near it. <laughs> Nowhere near it. Wow. Oh, he works at a comic book store now, he so he can haul everything. On your toes came on. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Luis, did you get my message earlier? I did. I'm sorry. I didn't message you back. We'll, uh, we'll talk after. Okay. Did you get, did you get my message? Oh, shit. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're blowing us all off. I know. Okay, it, I'm, it, I'm, it, I'm switching back to me, the empathetic one. It's been a hell of a day. I'm telling you, it's been just a long day. Um, Sorry. That's all I can say. I really, I, it's just my mind completely blanked. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm a little buzz right now. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm giggly drunk for some reason. <laughs> I feel like this is what I do when I call an ex-girlfriend. Like, right before I call an ex-girlfriend, I get really drunk, and I start telling her things I probably shouldn't. It never goes well. <laughs> it really never does. I've done that before. <laughs> I, I've re- I really have done that before. It, it never goes well. I've said, like, your feet were huge. Things. It just it was never – it wasn't a good call. <laughs> You know, Omar, I mean, I got a little buzz with Omar the other day when he was here in Vegas. Oh, yeah. Um, we got to talk about that. Yeah. Eventually, we're going to get to that. But keep yeah. going. Keep going. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to break it up. Who got the Shakira box? Everybody. <laughs> Shakira. 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 Dude, those, uh, those threads about Shakira boxes have gotten very inappropriate after a while. <laughs> I'm a... Uh... I'm uh, I still have it on Amazon. Like I still am able to actually get it from Amazon. The only thing is like I placed that order f- right when it first came out. That was and I'm like, I really, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I really don't have the extra hundred bucks to spare right now. So it's just like the account that I placed, it was an old debit card that I had closed out. So Amazon keeps sending me this notifications like, hey, you can still place this order and it'll come through on time, but unfortunately like your card is declined. So I don't know what to do. Sell it. I probably could. Actually, I'd probably flip it right now. It's uh, it's out of stock everywhere, right? Yeah, yeah but IST is going to have it next week. Stock trade is supposed to get it this week. But yeah. I don't think the – Sure, Amazon will get their second match. What are we estimating, like 40%? I'm saying 35. 30, I, I could see 35. There's no Pretty way. Kodansha is, what, 25, I think? 25% off most of Kodansha comics, isn't it? So, yeah, if it's a big – if it's a big discount, it's probably like 30 or 35. Yeah, there's no way in hell we're going to gonna get that 50% off. No. I'd be shocked. No, Emily even said it wasn't going to be 50. So, Emily is bae. Yeah. We got to get her on the show. Gio. Gio's our, our email man right now. Email her, Gio. Get her on the show. Is Gio, Gio's our agent. He's an agent without electricity. How does that work? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he has like, <laughs> been a sponsor, and he's able to email all these other like companies and stuff. So I think good. I think that root beer is going to get end up getting sent to Geo because they haven't responded to my emails. They, they respond have. to his. No, well, they're probably oh. like, man, we already sponsor enough white guys. We need the more Latino. <laughs> 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 they're going for a different demographic. Like root beer's yeah, brown, totally. Geo's brown. That, that's that works. Hmm. Oh, yeah, so this has a really cool uh, suggested reading order for uh, DC Comics. So it has everything like the Golden Age Omnibus and everything like that in order. So it's pretty cool. Definitely something to look into if you're that kind of person who wants to start reading from a certain spot or looking to where to begin. This is really cool. And it's free, right? It's free. Yeah, it's totally free. Okay. Uh, what else? Uh, last week was my birthday. I was gone at Disneyland. That's why I was only on the show for like five minutes last week. Um, so a little bit of my birthday haul. I got a Spider-Man Homecoming. My favorite Spider-Man movie. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's, it's a real uh, weird, like misprinted box art on the back. I don't know if you guys noticed that. It's all misprinted. Oh, like if you hold it, it down. Yeah, if you hold it this way, like you do, and you turn it around, he's facing upward, even though he's supposed to be hanging upside down. But if you turn it over and hang them upside down, all the uh, all the studio credits here are written upside down, so it's all messed up. But that's cool. A nice little touch. Hmm. Uh, what else? Oh, I got this real cool uh, Guardians hat while at Disneyland. I needed a new hat, and uh, the Guardians ride at Disneyland is really awesome. So, walk there with that hat. And did you say the Guardians ride was different at night than during the day? Yeah, at night it becomes uh, monsters, monsters break out or something like that. I forget. But it's the same ride, of course, but the story is a little bit different. And if you ride it during the day, it's you trying to break out the Guardians. And when you ride it at night, you realize, oh, everybody left, but they forgot group, Baby Groot behind. So now you got to go back and save Baby Groot. And in the meantime, all the other monsters from the collector's building is escaped also. So there's all these crazy monsters jumping around everywhere. So it's really cool. Is this inter interactive? It's not interactive at all. It's just they say just the only way you can fight the monsters is by screaming really loud. And then because the ride is basically gotcha. You go on like an elevator and it just drops you and it raises you back up and it drops you further down and it raises you back up higher and it drops you some more. So it's really like the whole time you feel like you're, you're falling like this. And like, I'm actually really like trying to like catch air. Like I was going to grab onto something. But it's fun. Um, what else? I had a bag here of all my stuff. Shit. Did you get a bunch of Halloween candy? <laughs> I ate all like, that. I ate all that. You got a bag of Halloween candy you took from your kids. <laughs> hey, man, my kids are babies. They don't need candy, so I ate all that shit. <clears throat> I got this uh, exclusive uh, Thor Ragnarok button or pin that you can only get at Disneyland. Ooh. It's really cool and neat. Fancy. Did you get two of those? Nope. Thanks for nothing. You're welcome. And then one of my favorite things I got, because the whole ride takes place in uh, the collector's sanctuarium or whatever you want to call it. They have a Cosmo dog. Oh, cool. A little plushy dog. Oh, that's awesome. You got one? Yeah. What's up? So you got one? This isn't imaginary. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> right there. <laughs> <laughs> they also have a, uh, it's like this because it's in like a little container. Uh, they have another one like this that's Howard the Duck, too. But I don't really care much for Howard the Duck. I don't have any attachment to him, but I do really like Cosmo because of the Guardi DNA Guardians of the Galaxy stuff. Hmm. We need to read some Steve Gerber, Howard the Duck, man. Uh, all, all I need is to read some drunk 70s assholes ranting about how Hawaii hates Marvel and Marvel comics. There are plenty of YouTube channels for that. Yeah. Yeah, really. Um, <laughs> Just Jill was bouncing got, uh, and he saw the dog. I got a DC Rebirth Wonder Woman today in the mail. Nice. That's a great book. It's a Rucka, right? It's a what? The Rucka, yeah. The Rucka? Yeah. The Rucka. I love it. I love yeah. the way that one is printed, too. Like uh, like in publishing order, instead of origin or year one and then uh, present day. So I think it's pretty cool that they kept it like that. It's all good. I'm going to read it. And then I think uh, the thing just about everybody else on the group got or wish they got or pretend I hate people because they got it. Um, this thing is heavy. I got the uh, Akira box set, too. Oh, I thought you were talking about My Little Pony box set. The what now? <laughs> Never mind. That ended with a thud. <laughs> <laughs> if I drop this, it, it's going to end with a thud. It'll probably go right through the bottom of my, my fucking... Have you door. opened it yet, dude? <laughs> yeah, it's opened Oh, okay. Well, man, it's uh, it's going to sit on my shelf and gather dust because that's what everybody accuses of, us of doing. Okay, come on. 90% of the people in the group, that's what they do. 
You want to see mine? I'll show you mine if you show me yours. Here, I'll show you what happened to mine. I left it sitting so long it's gathered cobwebs. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen some people post pictures where they, Amazon just delivers the box. Like, nothing else. The, the fucking box is sitting on their doorstep when they show up. I'm like, really, Amazon? You didn't even try. It depends uh -huh. on where it's shipped from. Like, if it's shipped from Kentucky, yo, uh, it came inside of a box. Okay. And then that box came inside of another box that was padded really well. Oh, you locked up. I, it's all the warehouses that they came from. Like, that's where Gabe got his was uh, Kentucky, too. Yeah, mine arrived fine. No, no problem. Just a big, fucking huge-ass box in on my doorstep. Well, that's good. Yeah, there was a, somebody that posted a picture where they showed up to their doorstep, and it was just the Akira box that was there. Yeah, I saw that picture. That made me worry a little bit. I guess a lot of people came like that because you go to the box that on Amazon, all the comments are like about how damaged it was during shipping and stuff. And then uh, my last little bit, I got the newest uh, Nick box since we're talking about boxes today. Um, this is a Nickelodeon uh, quarterly like loot crate kind of box. I haven't opened it yet. Did you get a reptile box? Full exclusive. Fun Nickelodeon 90s items and stuff. Did you uh, get Reptar bars? You know they were selling them, right? Yeah, they have them at FYE, but I don't have an FYE in, in Vegas. Who the fuck has an FYE anymore? I thought that was gone with, like, Circuit City. <laughs> I don't know, dude. <laughs> Not as bad as Blockbuster, but we have an FYE in the mall still really? in Kentucky. Every time I walk yeah. in. We also have, oh, man. Every time I walk Dude, we also have a Kmart. <laughs> we still have a Kmart here in town. No, Kmart is huge in Puerto Rico. K Kmart is really, still? Kmart is huge in Puerto Rico. You can still get a lot of Kmarts. And Gio will attest to this. You can still find a lot of Kmarts in Puerto Rico. Like, apparently... All the Kmart's that are located in the world have now resided in Puerto Rico for some stupid reason. Well, the guy that – well, never mind. That's a whole other topic. Um, when I was up in Canada, they had a lot of Sears, too, and I hadn't seen a lot of brick-and-mortar stores for those hey, guys in a long time. If you're looking for a, a block – I almost said McDonald's. If you're looking for a blockbuster, uh, you can go to Mexico. Mexico still has the one Mexico remaining – them? Yeah, they have the one remaining open blockbuster. That's awesome. Oh, no, no, it's not. I hate Blockbuster. <laughs> what am I saying? <laughs> I went to, uh, on my way to uh, Disneyland, I went through Barstow. And in Barstow is the original Del Taco. Oh, that's right. You said that's you awesome. had the original yeah. Del Taco food. Yeah. And you can go there and you can get, I get my normal, like, spicy chicken burrito and, like, uh, chicken soft taco. And usually the ones you get here or anywhere else, they're just shit. They're just garbage meat and shitty lettuce and shitty um, Gilles or uh, Lewis's chair. Um, but then that the real Del Taco, like the chicken, the soft chicken tacos are just packed full of meat. Like, I didn't even close the taco together to eat it. It was great. All like really great tasty cheese and great tasty beans and all that fun stuff. So, Did Luis pass out? I don't, let's see. What are we looking at? We're looking at the oh, bottom yeah. of his chair. Down. <laughs> okay. I always worry when I see uh, strange camera angles if somebody passes out. <laughs> why I always wear pants just in case. <laughs> That's always why I don't wear pants. Yeah, I know. Ooh, I got pants on, suckers. <laughs> I'm pulling it just today wearing shorts. Nice. So I also got the Akira box set, like most people. Um, it's um, it's something I've been looking forward to because this is the first time we've had Akira released in America in its original right to left format with i know um i, I kind of i did a little review and a little comparison of like akira on my channel but uh it's got uh the untranslated sound effects which is a huge pet peeve of mine but hey what the fuck ever i mean i'll get over it yeah they don't i don't want to touch the original artwork but they could have wrote like a little index footnote at the bottom of the panel like they did with berserk but instead, they put the index with the sound effects all the way in the back of the book, which is – I can't stand that. But like I said, that's just me. Um, but if you never read Akira, you should give it a shot. It's a, the Citizen Kane of all manga. It's it's good. Yeah, I just, uh, I just filmed my review because uh, Steven from the board, Jim Mintz, called me out on, on him filming his first. I, I filmed mine. I'll probably release it later tonight or tomorrow. 
Not review, just a spotlight. I just went through it. Yeah, I'm going to yeah. have to... I'll blow the cobwebs off of mine someday and read it. It's good, Jez. You watched the movie, right? You liked it, didn't you? I listened to the soundtrack today. Oh, it's so good. Oh, the uh, the vinyl? The vinyl, yeah. I listened to it awesome today. Vinyl. This vinyl? This thing is so cool? Yeah, there it is. The Shakira vinyl. Shakira? It sounded... It sounded different than her other vinyl. Yeah, there's a lot of screaming. Yeah. Okay, I will move on to my haul, which was small compared to yours, Gabe. I got, because everybody said it was so good, Red Hood and the Outlaws Rebirth. I never thought I'd see the day I would buy Red, Ho Red Hood, written by Scott Lobdell. But apparently it's good. So I got it. And whenever we see the day where Luis uh, films his review of it. Right. 52 version. <laughs> I got Supergirl because she's with Batgirl in the Phantom Zone. So I love Supergirl Rebirth. I love that art. Who, who does the art on that? Brian Ch Ching. Is it Brian Chang? I love those covers. They're so good. Yeah, I mean, this is awesome that they're in the Phantom Zone. And here's some more. So yeah, and then I yeah, also, that, also that's, too. What's that? That's the book. That's the book that got canned, right? Um, Super Woman got canned. Superwoman Super and Blue Beetle. That's too bad. Which one, Blue Beetle? Um, and I also got Nightwing because I heard it was so great. I haven't read it yet, obviously. Still in the plastic. And since I love her so much, Lady Mechanica in hardcover. Oh, so you, you did end up getting. Is that the deluxe hardcover that was like 50 bucks? Or? Uh, it was $29, $29. And then it was, um, you know, like half off on in stock. And I'll open it so I can show you some of the artwork, which is phenomenal, besides being a phenomenal story. Is he writing it too? That's uh, Joe Benitez. Yeah, this first right? one he did. Yeah, it's crazy. I remember him from uh, what was the book he used to work on in Image? Is it some kind of ah, damn it? What was it? Was it Cyber Force or something like that? What were we talking about? Joe Benitez. Then he went on to do that Justice League run. I can't remember what Image book he used to work on. It was one of those Wildstorm or uh, Mark Silvestri Top Cow books. The tenth, maybe? Oh no, that's Tony Daniel. Shit, memory's gone to crap. The older I get, <laughs> that's all right. As long as we got pretty pictures to look at, we're okay. So yeah, Lady Mechanica, and that was it. That was actually pretty small because I maxed out my credit card on the previous hauls. Uh, that I made a haul video of, I had like 40 books. So this, this was a small haul. Damn, dude. Yeah. I went, uh, I went crazy. But, uh, how about reading? What did everybody read this week? Omar, you, do you uh, read anything? I did. Uh, I read that Nova book sam alexander i read i'm rereading the transformers oh you okay that's right uh, i remember my uh complete hate for the new marvel cosmic during marvel now so i kind of waited to read it for about four or five years and i went ahead and jumped the gun and started reading it's not that bad um and yeah i started reading the transformers phase two and after that i'm going to read um was it Grayson? I got the Omni of Grayson. I've never, I haven't read that yet, but yeah. I really like Tom King and Tim Seeley, and I heard a lot of good things about that book. That's next on the list. I'm about a third of the way through Grayson, and it's awesome. I'm loving it. Yeah, is that your first time reading it? Um, I read, uh, I read the first two trades when they came out, but I forgot everything. Um, okay, so. It's like new material to me, and it's really good. I really like it a lot. Yeah, I've never, I haven't read it, so I'm looking forward to reading it. Yeah, I read, besides getting into that, I read Super Sons, 
which is amazingly great. Yeah, I good. love how they battle each other all the time. They just constantly yap at each other like little puppies. I love it. It was great. Um, I'm hoping they collect that in hardcover, dude. I mean, I'm that's like wishful thinking, but... I don't know. know. I bet this is pretty popular. It, it might be... Um, I mean, this was really well done. Great writing, really fun art, I, and the whole concept is just great. It, it is, almost made me like Damien. <laughs> is it still um, Patrick Gleason and um, Tomasi working on that it's book? Tomasi and Jorge Jimenez. Oh, I can't... Dude, Marvel... I, they had Jorge Jimenez. Like, they could have kept him and made him an exclusive, and they let him, like... Just go because he worked like here off and on, off and on, kind of like the way they did uh, Kenneth Rockefort, which I think Kenneth Rockefort is like an amazing artist. He's the guy that did all those um, Red uh, Red Hood and the Outlaws, mm. the very first like twenty issues of those. But I mean, I'm glad DC pulled him because he's a damn good artist. Yeah, it was. I just totally enjoyed the art in it. It was lots of fun. Um, I really hope they get a hardcover out of Super Sun sooner or later. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Um, then I read All Star Batman one and two, and I didn't particularly care. Uh, two was okay. One I thought it was kind of boring. I was disappointed in these because I love Scott Snyder. I don't have a problem with John Romita Jr.'s art, but um, I did a review on these and I. Just think it was it was kind of tired compared to Tom King's run. I was pretty disappointed. Um, one thing that I was not disappointed in, which other people seem to hate, but I actually really enjoyed it, was Batman: Night of the Monster Men. Um, I don't know. I I uh, am not going to apologize for liking Batman and his gang, Clayface, Siren. Um, Nightwing, Batwoman, and Orphan. Hey, I, have a, I have a question, Jess. Yeah. Um. So you, I saw you got Nightwing, and I know that you have Batman, and I assume you're going to get the Detective Comics. Why, why did you get that? Just because you wanted to read the Night of the Monster Man all in one sitting? Yeah. Because it's really hard to get up and pick books up from your shelf. <laughs> <laughs> hey dude i'd rather watch netflix than i own the damn blu-ray so i totally get it i get it man um that's a legit question i wanted to i think it reads better all together in this format i know that it's i know that there are bits in batman and bits in detective and where are the other bits i don't know um was it just batman nightwing. And detective nightwing. nightwing oh and yeah. nightwing yeah see I, I didn't want to go through all that i just wanted to have it all in one run. I heard that's what some people um, felt it was disjointed when it was coming out in floppy form and they felt it read better as a collected edition. I don't know. I just really enjoyed it. And I, I just, um, yeah, I, I didn't, I didn't want to piece it together in the other books. I think those issues were missing out of the Batman hardcover. Right. Um, this book. The, uh, the issues from, yeah, yeah, the issues for um, no, Night of the Monster the, Men was in there, yeah. It's, well, it's, it's in, exactly what it was. It was in there, but it was all. People it, were complaining that they should have left them out and just collected that in an oversized format, but. I, I agree. I, it's it's hard because, like, what do you do? You double dip, which I guess some people do. Um, I was just wondering why you decided. I didn't know if you were going to get Detective or which you obviously did. Yeah, uh, I did, and I just I, wanted it all I, I, in one. I, 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 whatever. Detective old news. I just wanted to get... <laughs> <laughs> what an ass hat. Yeah, completely. <laughs> when you got a comic book store, you get them release date. You're going to make fun yeah. of people that are waiting on their in-stock orders now. Oh, yeah. Big elitist comic store employee. <laughs> now you get your stuff two weeks before we do. All right, Justin, I won't tell you when we get, uh, you get Adam Hughes out here. <laughs> don't don't do that to me i've been planning that trip now for five months or whenever you first told me about it okay that's all i got that's all i read that's all i got and that's all for me so what i read uh 
it's actually I blame Omar for it. Good. While we were out comic book star hopping when he was out here uh, last week, he mentioned to me we were talking about you know our favorite omnibus and what got us an omnibus the first time and absolutes and stuff like that. And he mentioned we talked about what we thought the best absolutes were that weren't really titled absolute. And he mentioned this book. He mentioned Battle Chasers. Oh, I love Whoa, that where'd you get that? Oh, I've had this for years. Oh, all right. That's years. super rare. Yeah. It so is. I finally, I finally busted this out and read it. It's been years. It's been probably about, God, what, 20 years, 15 years since this Battle book Chasers, came out? Yeah, 98, 99. Yeah. Yeah. So I love this book. It's great. Uh, I mean, I know how hard it is to find this version out there in the world, but man, this is a beautiful, beautiful hardcover slipcase. Comes with a nice little poster. <laughs> the poster, that's cool. A uh, nice little wraparound cover as well. But no wraparound, like printed cover on the actual book itself. You know, it's old school with the black leather. Like but anybody, anybody that watched um, anime or read some or played vi uh, video games from Japan, like a lot of those characters, like the guy that the robot dude looks like Whitzel from Darkstalkers. Yeah, I mean, I love I, I love Madara. I know his art's beautiful in this book. It really sparked my interest because when the video game came out, he finally released the video game for Battle Chasers. So when you read this book, it feels like he was writing this for an RPG. It, it's very much, if you ever played like any kind of RPG, like Final Fantasy or Chrono Trigger or anything like that, uh, this feels very much like a video game. It's all about like power-ups and mysterious characters and new weapons and, and all that kind of stuff. But there's some great, great artwork involved in this series. Joe Mad the genius. I love his work. Too bad comics yeah, we, didn't pan out for him started doing video games. We, we were talking, dude. That guy was drawing Uncanny X-Men when he was 18 years old. 18 years old. He started out. I think well, I was like 16, dude. Like that guy was still in high yeah, school. Yeah, Mar his Marvel Marvel Comics presents that he did were like he was 16 years old and working at Marvel Comics. That that's crazy. I think I was like jerking off to the like lingerie catalog of fucking Sears. So it came out a week ago? <laughs> you know, you're in Canada and found all those Sears. <laughs> no, you don't remember that anyway. Uh, yeah, that's crazy to think about how young he, he was doing all these things. Like I, I, I thought when he was drawing on Kenny X-Men, the guy had to be like in his forties because he had just perfected that anime slash Arthur Adams kind of style. Yeah, I mean he's he he has a style that like people still today try to kind of ape and mimic. You know, you just when you see Joe Mad Art, you can tell it's Joe Mad Art. It's great. Uh, story super fun. I mean, it's all about just a little girl whose dad disappears, and her dad was a general in the military, and she finds his magical gauntlets, and she's all powerful now. So it's it's great. It was a good time. I enjoyed reading that book. He's supposed to be coming back and finishing the series up because the series kind of ends on a cliffhanger, or he stops making it in the middle of like the cliffhanger. So hopefully he'll get back to producing the comic, not the video game is out and complete. But yeah, that's pretty much all I read. And uh, besides that, like I said, I read a little bit of a uh, detective comics. You all know, right, all right. You don't have to rub it in my face. You guys who are going to be getting this probably sometime next week. I right, already read it. We'll <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> what a douchebag. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, what comes out next week that I'm going to buy it before you guys? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> everything. You'll be getting everything before us now. Speaking of Akira and box sets, that's our topic this week on Omni Bros Live. We're going to be talking about box sets, famous box sets, rare box sets, fun box sets. I like saying box sets. Box sex. Box sex. Bot sex. That's what Omar had when he went to bot con. Bot sex. <laughs> you remember? <laughs> uh, no, it was not that cool. <laughs> Male to female ratio was like insane. 
Yeah, as, that. One, as one would expect from a Transformers convention. <laughs> and let's check in on Louise. Oh, it's still just his chair. Kind of worried about well, he him. He was drinking vodka. He was drinking vodka and giddy as a schoolgirl, and, and now he's gone. So we'll we'll uh, keep checking in back in on him. Maybe he got a little horned up. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so, Box said, since you have read Akira, know Akira, and um, can tell us about the Akira box set, why don't I throw it to you, Omar, while I uncover some of my other box sets, and you can tell sure. us about this uh, Akira box set that uh, people seem to have gone gaga over. They should. Such a great series. So, Akira, it's finally here. First of all, I didn't realize it's 35 fucking years. Good lord. It's funny, Six I, was my, I was doing my video today, and I busted out my Blu-ray. And it's the Blu-ray is the 25th anniversary, so I didn't realize this oh, Blu-ray was that which, old. Which, Blu which Blu-ray do you have? Which release? Uh, and? Yeah, does it does it have the two dubs, the streamline dub and the pioneer dub? I don't know. Oh, here's here. Okay, you've seen that Blu-ray, right? No, I don't know what you're talking about. I just oh, yeah. bought this one. How how do you pronounce Canada? Canada. Yeah, the the protagonist. How do you pronounce his name? Oh, yeah, Canada. Okay, cool. Well, yeah, that's 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 the stream that's the streamlined dub, right? We've been mispronouncing <coughs> it for years. There he is. Yo ho! <laughs> I remember this one. Multiple. Are you drinking vodka and uh, cranberry juice? Hey! Right off the bat, smoking like a true alcoholic. Didn't even need to smell it. Uh, um. <laughs> <laughs> we got the uh, Mexican uh, Thurston Howell the third. Yeah, there. you look like Skipper from Thurston Gilligan's Howell. Island. <laughs> A seven-hour tour. Was it seven? How many hour? I don't know. Three-hour tour, and they mm -hmm. packed clothes and, and a million dollars in a suitcase. That's good stuff. And like uh, five weeks of outfits, and they all packed. That's good stuff. Keep going. No, no, keep going. Keep going. The okay. skipper's here. We're uh, skipper's here. So, we'll go back to Omar then. So, Akira, yeah, buy it because it's sold out. And that's the only reason you need to buy it. <laughs> you want to be one of the cool oh, kids, oh, oh, oh. right? This Blu-ray says it has all three audio tracks, the remastered, the original, and the, the remastered. Japanese. Right, yeah. yeah. So that so, so there were two, you know, there were two releases of Akira, right? There was the Streamline dub, and then there was the Pioneer dub, which there became Funimation or whatever. But anyway, that's... Uh, Pronounce the protagonist's name. Is that on which version you saw first? Like, I, you know. That's the one. Was that Jess? No, no. it's Luis <laughs> being drunk. <laughs> so, Jess went to go get some box sets. Yeah, I went to go what get my box, box sets, sets you while have? you talked about Akira. Yeah, I did. That was it. That's all I had to say. Oh, that's it? Yeah. Everybody and their mother needs to buy Akira before it sells out. Well, that's all I got. <laughs> you, what's it about? Tell us what it's about. You're the one that's read it. I've never read it. You guys don't know what it's about at all? No, I, 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 I've never read it. I don't I know anything just... about it. Oh, okay. I thought you were just fucking with me. Okay, no, not on. At all. I'm throwing it to you so you can explain it and tell us why everybody should get it. Yes, you really don't well, know what a cure is? Oh, well, I was I thought you were messing with me because it's oh, such wow. a staple. Like even if you don't read manga, like it's So, Neo Tokyo, right? Where the Olympics are going to be held. Has a giant bomb. This is the future. There's motorcycle gangs fighting other motorcycle gangs. Mm -hmm. There's a lot. And there's a secret. Lots of lots and of windows a, drawn in this book. There's a lot of windows. And a secret project involving kids with 
psychic powers, not Stranger Things, but sort of like Stranger Things. Wow, that second season was bad. Haven't seen it yet. Yeah. Oh. It's okay. It's okay? Oh, love the first season. Anyway, wonderful artwork. Um, what else can I say about Akira without giving it away? Like, the way that Ultimo draws machines is completely amazing. Like, somebody took his designs and actually made a real, like, Kaneda's motorcycle in Japan. It's so badass. I love his artwork. I mean, I was flipping through it today when I made my video, and just there's so many windows. Like, every window is drawn on every skyscraper and every building that's all being collapsed on one another during the big fight scene. Well, yeah, and it's so de detailed, too. So another reason why people it comes into detail is insane. Like, love yeah. his artwork, right? Because when you think of manga, like sometimes you think of like flashy action sequences, but he really puts a lot of detail into his backgrounds. Like you were saying, like every little window in buildings and things like that. Just his architect is awesome. Well, not only that, he gets better as he goes. Because like, I think Akira took him what four or five years to do somewhere. Like Mm -hmm. He gets a lot better as he goes. Like towards the end of it, he's drawing some bat shit, insane, like nutty stuff. And I think it's um after book four, I remember right, or book five. Basically, like it enters in like a post-apocalypse setting, and it just gets nuts from there. It's incredible right. we're, stuff. We're already into like a post-apocalyptic future, and then it gets darker. Right, 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 right. Yeah, it's just a damn good series. I mean, a semi -happy first, ending. my video for it, this is the first time I flipped through the books. Just I can just tell by just flipping through some of the pages and just looking at the panels that I'm going to be in for a fucking experience reading this book. Like, it's just everything just seems and, so over. And, you've, and you've seen the movie, right? You've oh, yeah. I love it. Yeah. So a lot of the side characters that appear in the movie that are in there for like one or two seconds, like, are really important characters in the book. Who oh, yeah. Volume six, you see the uh, the the big uh, the big fat clown, the black clown face guy. He plays oh, a Joker. Role. Well, he plays a prominent right. role. That's not bad. But yeah. that's not bad. <laughs> what was the uh, butch girl's name? I forgot the. Uh, oh, I'm blanking on the name of her. The seer or which one? She's badass. I love her character. Um, she shows up more towards the end. Oh, the soldier chick. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love now, her character. So the cool thing about that is I did a I did a little video comparison to um, some of the old releases, and the epic release had a Warren Ellis short story featuring her. Ch uh, what's her name? Chudo. I can't remember her name. Yeah, and it was drawn by like Terry Schumacher. Yeah, it was really cool. I wish they had kept some of that in this, like you know, besides the color and all that. That I'm, I'm okay with black and white, but I wish they had kept some of those little short stories from like some of those epic comics that they released because I thought they were really cool. Like there's a awesome pinup by Joe Madureira. Oh, come on, dude. Don't. Oh, man. Like, I showed that in my video. It's it's a really cool pinup. Because, I, I like, I'll, I mean, Akira inspired a lot of American yeah. Western art, you know? There's pinups by, like, Mobius and things like that that they're just not collected anywhere. Wait, wait. Where where, where can you find this? You just said the magic words of Warren Ellis, <laughs> Joe Matt, and Mobius. Uh, they were originally released in the Marvel comic run, the epic run, the ones that are colored. Okay. I, yeah, I showed them on my video, but let me uh, let me grab one while Jess gets something. You got, you got a box? I've got everything. All right. I'm all set. Somebody told me that that Marvel All Color Edition was the first comic visually colored. Yeah, that was Steve O'Liff's first, like, chameleon, yeah. chameleon computer. I can't remember the name of the group. Those guys, that was the first time I ever saw, like, digital colors in comic books. And then Steve O'Liff, you know, was hired by Image later on. When they went on to do their, that's why Image Comics, you know, when they when they first came out, like their comics stood out because of the colors, graphics, and all those guys. Yeah, yeah Marvel and DC so far behind. Yeah, Liquid did the uh, did the coloring in that uh, Battle Chasers book as well. I really like the uh, in the box set where you get the Akira Club hardcover art book. That was nice. This thing is really cool because I was. Just, People were telling me that before this box set came out, like this book was super rare and out of print and just really hard to kind of come by now they reprinted it. And it's beautiful, just beautiful artwork in it. Yeah, a lot of those were like pinups and tray, like art from the tray paperbacks. 
Yeah, it's a lot of painted, uh, you can tell they're painted covers. The dust jacket has like a cool little cutaway so you can see the cover in it too, so that's really neat. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, like you were saying, uh, Akira is what brought, basically brought Japanese animation and manga to the United States. Yeah. Well, Akira was a Akira first. Me. Akira for me was like a huge inspiration. I still remember like going over to my cousin's house, who's now like a crazy nut. Um, and he, my cousin's never, he's always been a little, he's been a little off in the head. He's like, dude, you got to see this movie. It's called fucking Akira. And I'm like, all right, whatever. And it's a VHS copy. He slaps it in. For those of you kids out there that don't know what a VHS copy, look it up. And we start watching it. And I had never seen something like Akira before that. Like it just it blew my mind the first time I saw it. How uh, the animation was so gorgeous. There were so many colors, and it was violent. It was violent as hell. And in the anime, when he does that bod that bodily transformation at the end, it's just, ugh, ugh, yeah. He turns into like a human beanbag chair. And I'm like, holy shit. I love the way, and this might be a little of spoilers, but the way that it's animated when his girlfriend dies. When she's like, oh, 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 yeah. I love that. Such but, a classic movie. If you're calling spoilers on the... Okay, I get the manga. Because the manga is completely different from the anime for the most part. But if you're calling spoilers oh, yeah, on the anime that's almost 30 years old, fuck off. I oh, man, people seen still it get it. <laughs> Fucker, I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Jess. I love you. <laughs> You show up once in three months and you spoil Akira for me? This has been a moment of impotent drunk rage. <laughs> totally worth it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> so, Omar, do you have any other box sets you want to talk about? I do, but uh, I've had the spotlight for a while, so why don't you take over? Okay. Thank you. I have several box sets. First one I have is fairly precious. It's the um, Usagi Ujimbo hardcover box set. Oh, uh, is that is that how we're gonna kick it off? I was that was like my last one I was gonna show. I had to go big. <laughs> wow. You had yes, the spotlight, so I had to <laughs> I had to grab it back. Uh, this is precious to me because it was a gift from my good friend Mike Noah. Um, who was a longtime contributor to our page. Um, so this, these are the hard covers. They're pretty hard to find. Um, even the soft cover collection has gotten hard to find, although I think Fantagraphics is going to reprint it. Um, so that's my first box set. And before Akira, let's see, where is it? Um, before Akira was a craze, Two years ago, this box set was a huge craze because um, it went on sale on um, eBay because Target had too many of them, and they were offering it for $80 or $75 shipped free. And if you see how heavy and big this thing is, this is the Calvin and Hobbes hardcover box collection. I love that box set. And it was originally like $175. Let's see, where is it? $175. Um, I still have the sticker that goes <laughs> on it. Um, and that, that's a question James Dayrit asked on the page earlier today. What do you do with these stickers? I put a little stick them on it and just stick it on the top of the box. So it's there, but I took it off. But yeah, $175. And they had it. For $75 and free shipping, and that ran like wildfire through the group. There must have been 30 or 40 people that got this from eBay uh, and went crazy a couple years ago. And um, I will pull a book out. I have a trade paperback set. And the trade paperback set, it's not as nice as the hardcovers, but it is gorgeous still. So. Well, I think you may have a benefit in the trades because these hardcovers, apparently the binding is a little fragile. Uh, I haven't had that problem yet, but um, the binding is supposed to be really fragile. Um, and here's some of Calvin and Hobbes. <laughs> Calvin and Hobbes. 
for those of you who grew up reading him. Me. Yeah. I, I don't think I've ever really read Calvin and Hobbes. Maybe. Uh, get out of this chat. All right, see ya. Shut your whore mouth. <laughs> God. Drunken rage on him, Luis. Um, How do you read Calvin and Hobbes? I don't, I don't know. It's the essential comic strip of all time. I've also Not got... Family Circus? <laughs> family <laughs> Circus. Family Circus. Yeah. <laughs> family Circus. What a it good was poll. Peanuts? No, no, no. For me, it was Peanuts, Calvin yep. and Hobbes, and I'm trying to remember the... Um, Far Side? Boondocks. Oh, Boondocks. Boondocks, yeah. Boondocks yeah. is great. I loved Boondocks. Uh, I recently got, oh, this is even heavier than uh, anything else. I got this beast in the mail, the complete far side. Damn Gary it. Larson. I, I didn't know you were showing that. I went to Hallman from the top of the stairs. <laughs> <Well, laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, this is the complete far side. It's, it weighs 30 or 40 pounds. And it, uh, Titus Kiramana got it for me because I couldn't find it anywhere. Uh, around, I, I don't think it's out of print or anything, but um, I just hadn't been able to find it, and he found it in a comic book store for me. Arrgh! I love the Far Side. I yeah, love Gary Larson. Like one of, uh, he has a lot of little side notes in there too. A lot of his uh, stories, like that went on behind the scenes. <laughs> like when he had to replace, like I remember one of them was like a bunch of ants carrying a uh, uh, an old man up to the ant hill. Like people got, like the editor got offended. So he was like, you need to change that. And he changed it to a bunch of ants carrying a baby up to an ant hill, up to their ant hill. And the editor was like, all right, that's good. <laughs> and apparently it was like, what? And then there was one time when I brought up Family Circus, it reminded me of Far Side because he was talking about how on like the newspaper he, they printed it on accidentally changed the captions of Family Circus and the Far Side. <laughs> And people still wrote him like they were like, "Oh man, that was amazing! That was such a funny like little uh, comic that you did last week." And he was like, "What are you all talking about? <laughs> that was a mistake." So apparently, it still makes sense without with the wrong caption. That's that I haven't got to that. That's in this uh, collection. Yeah, in collection one, he tells all these little stories about what happened, how like behind the scenes, and they're really interesting too. Hmm. A lot what? of uh, things that he couldn't show. What's the one that just came back recently that um it's with the penguin? I think is it Bloom no, it's not Bloom County, it's Bloom County, yeah. Yeah, Bloom County. County. With yeah Opus, but, but it's paperback, I think. It's no, not he's, been he's been doing it on um he's been doing it on Facebook. If you follow his Facebook page, he's been posting regularly like Bloom County strips. Oh really? New ones? Yeah. I think it's Bloom the one with the penguin, right? With like the suit? Yeah. Opus. Yeah. Yeah, he's been doing new strips for like two years now on oh, his really? Facebook page. Yeah. I know the box set just came out like with the 25 years or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it, it turned out to be like in soft cover. And it was like $80, so I passed on it. Yeah, fuck soft covers. Yeah, it's not soft cover review, it's hard cover review. Or it was. <laughs> it was. It was. Um, then I got. <clears throat> Bone, 20 year celebration. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. This I got a couple of years ago, courtesy of Brooks Ryland Slayton, who uh, posted a Midtown, Midtown Comics sale on this. So I got it for like half price, which is good because it's fairly expensive. Um, and I got it for half price and. Let me see if I can carefully open it so that not everything spills out because there's a ton of stuff in here. Oh, that's cool. There is a print right here, a signed numbered print. This is in color. This paper, this hardcover book is in color. So that's, oh, that's cool. That's, that's awesome. I've also never read Bone. Oh my goodness! You and you're ninety. Your <laughs> then there's like a collector coin and chess pieces that come with it, little figurines. I was poor and I just got the black and white one collection. Okay, probably.
Later. Whoop. <laughs> Bye. Wait, why do you not know how to work your, your hangouts, fool? <laughs> Whoops, there he goes. Uh, and then I have Uncle Scrooge. Set. Oh, Showing it upside down. Sorry. Yeah. Uncle that one's a. Uh, that's the one that's out of print. Hopefully, coming back into print next year. Mm. This has oh, Return to Plain Awful and the Son of the Sun. That's the first Don Rosa Uncle Scrooge story. Right. Ooh, good stuff. So we will. Take Gabe, a look. Your kids would love Bone. If you sat down and read it with them, it's a great book to read with your kids. I They're agree. One yeah. <laughs> huh? They're one years old and three years old. And I don't think yeah. Still. <laughs> You're saying your kids are too dumb to read Bone at one and two? <laughs> I'm saying Bone is, Bone is autistic. Oh, no. I'm going to shut up. <laughs> I'm just going to sit here quietly and drink my... <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I didn't want to say anything. The minute that came out of your mouth, I said, you fucked up. <laughs> hey, you threw that Trump card out early, dude. Damn. Boom. Boom. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> I didn't want to touch it. I was like, let's try to move past that. <clears throat> then I have a uh, marble box, famous firsts or whatever it's called. It opens up to like the Avengers mansion and then has all the first books, everything from uh, Thor to not brand Ech. That's the kind of shit that like gets an old dude hard. Like you yeah. don't need Viagra. That <laughs> I totally that's have the boner. <laughs> that's I have the boner. Silver Age Woody over this. You're exactly right. <laughs> everything, everything just has a silver. Yeah, <laughs> it's all ah. silver. It's all silver. Oh my god, we don't even know. That. Ah, too late. <laughs> <laughs> ah. We were all supposed to out to get drunk together, and Luis just beats us to it. <laughs> and then it got destroyed in the flood, but I, um, Nathan Burkholz was nice enough to uh, send me the link to an eBay uh, uh, offer where I offered the guy um, not much money, and I was able to replace it. And that is... Blah, blah, blah. This is going to be the hernia episode. The hernia episode. The Secret World, Secret Wars Battle World box set, which I really, really loved. And it got destroyed, and so I was really happy that I could get this replaced. Oh. Okay. That's, I'm, that's really, I'm really, really waiting for the next big box set that we all know I'm yes. going to get. <laughs> to come out because of great infinity boner yeah infinity boner and beyond so i think that's my wife all the time <laughs> <laughs> what's that um <laughs> looking around i have some peanuts box sets but um yeah <laughs> But whatever. So that's pretty much it for me and my box sets. Didn't you also have like the Strangers in Paradise hardcover box set? Oh, crap. Yeah, where is that? I pulled that out. Oh, never mind. Man, you got all the good box sets. I w now I'm not going to feel bad if you throw your back out next time you bend over to pick <laughs> one up. <laughs> like, I, I was jealous about that damn bone box set. And then you pull out this Secret Wars box set. I do have Strangers and Now you got the Paradise. Strangers in Paradise hardcover box set. Yeah, I do have that, and I pulled it out, but I wonder where I put it. So we, uh, uh, Omar, do you have any more box sets to talk about? Or did... No, Jess <laughs> took a whole bunch. All right, all right. So I got Yutena, Revolutionary Girl. This is manga from, like, the 90s. And what's cool is I read this back in the 90s, and uh, I was like, oh, man, this is like shoujo manga, which is manga for girls, right? But I reread them recently, and it is not like shoujo manga. It reminds me more of Evangelion and how crazy of a mindfuck it is. Because these kids are, like, battling in this high school. But you don't know if the high school is, like, the afterlife or not. It's all these little hints at it. It's pretty cool. 
it's just two volumes. Still in print, unlike most of Jess's box sets. Um, and then one of my personal favorites is the Nausicaa box set from Vis as well. This, um, you probably have seen the movie, Hayao Miyazaki's movie, Studio Ghibli, before they were Studio Ghibli, um, of Nausicaa. So he started this before the movie was made and then finished it in 1989, so long after the movie was made. So it's got additional chapters, much like Akira. It finishes out the story, but I love. I mean, this is the guy that you know did Totoro Ponyo and like Spirited Away, I Princess just, Mononoke. I just saw Spirited Away last night on the big screen. Yeah, what'd you think? Uh, it was great. I I, um, I should have Googled it ahead of time because there's an awful lot of symbolism and stuff in there of old culture and new culture. Yeah, all there's kinds, all kinds of commentary on greed and things like that, and I didn't really, I didn't pick up on it until afterwards, and we started talking about it in the car ride on the ride home. That's Root the one that won an Oscar, I think. Yeah, it's considered the greatest um, a, uh, animated movie of all time. People were saying, um, yeah, it's, course, it's that's good. Subjective. I, yeah, it really is, especially if you're like you know Studio Ghibli fan. But um, you know, this box set's awesome. It comes with a nice little poster of Nashika and Tito. And it's double-sided with, because that's another thing about Miyazaki is his wonderful use of watercolors. He's amazing. And if, um, he also, he also released a art of Nausicaa, but yeah, this is, uh, this is awesome. This is like a director's cut of the movie, like times three, cause it's three times as long. And it kind of tells you what happens to some of the characters in the movie. So, and like I said, his, Art is very detailed. It's awesome too. And I also have the uh, far side, which I'm not gonna pick up because that's ridiculous. But um, <laughs> but the same thing you showed the Usagi box set, the hardcover ones. Um, it's not surprise. I can't believe these hardcovers were like so limited too. You know, they they reprinted this in soft cover recently. I don't know why they didn't like this wasn't a limited run, so I don't know why Fanographics didn't go opt out to make the hardcover. Again, because they saw how many people went after the Dark Horse release of the um, Usagi saga. So I don't know why. Yeah. So this shows like the early appearances of Usagi. Yeah, and it also includes like some of the Ninja Turtles crossovers. Yeah. Yeah, they're cool. That was one thing I was upset about. Like he looks a little bit, a lot different in these early appearances though. Yeah, so this box set now is released in soft cover. The soft cover's out of print right now. Shit, that went out of print too. Yeah, I now I've heard through the grapevine they're re-releasing it, but so far it's out of print. Damn, I didn't realize. Well, you know what? It's good though. I'm glad people are getting into Yo Jimbo because he's the fucking man. Uh. But that's it as far as like box sets, you know. Well, like I said, I've got the far side down here. That, that really is one of my favorite ones. Um, what do you got, Gabe? Got anything to add? Uh, at first I didn't, and then as you guys just were just talking, I kind of figured I did have a couple of cool like box sets. Nothing, nothing like Far Side or Peanuts or Bone or any of the other stuff I've never read before. Have uh, the uh, Warren Ellis Freak Angels trade paperback box set. Oh yeah, that's I got that. That's good. Yeah, this is a really, uh, really cool post-apocalyptic story written by Warren Ellis. So it's, just, it's super crazy stuff. Uh, the first volume didn't quite pull me in. Uh, Warren Ellis is the king of decompressed storytelling, but I totally want to keep keep checking it out because I know it's going to get good eventually because it's Warren Ellis. So there's that. This is one, two, three, four, five, uh, six trade paperbacks in a uh, nice little box slipcase. Other than that, uh, this uh, Justice Bone uh, box that was really cool reminded me of this one I got. It's the uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2012 annual uh, tome put out by IDW Limited. And what it is, it's pretty freaking cool. 
and I'll show you guys. You get the, uh, there's a hardcover for the 2012 series or uh, one shot like annual they did. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. And inside of the case, you also get uh, this envelope. And this envelope contains, this is like one of my favorite things I own in my collection. Um, it contains the original uh, like Sharpie marker layouts that Kevin Eastman did. That's cool. On the pages. And then it also stapled to that is the blue line uh, original layouts and uh, lettering that he did. So some original, one of a kind, you know, legit, legitimately original artwork in here, which is really cool because you kind of get to see the process that Kevin Eastman does when he makes his pages and his artwork. And then, if that's not enough, behind the uh, hardcover, when you take it out, is one of the actual pencils he used for the artwork. Damn it. Oh man, you just broke that thing. <laughs> <laughs> what suck? Here's oh, a, that, an actual blue line pencil. That is that awesome. He used in the creation of the artwork. So, this is one of my most favorite things I've I've ever bought, ever ever ever. Even more than buying like a house or braces. And that is that. That's all I really got when it comes on any kind of box sets. And what's the box set that you're most looking forward to, Gabe? Oh, I wonder. Uh, the next box set, the biggest, baddest, most amazing box set that's going to be coming out, I believe it's March of next year, is, the, uh, of course, the Infinity War box set which is coming out just in time for the Infinity Wars movie, which is going to have standard-sized hardcovers of uh, Thanos Quest, Inf Infinity War, Infinity, uh, Infinity Gauntlet, Infinity War, Infinity Crusade. Uh, I don't know the whole thing off the top of my head. Uh, Adam Warlock and Infinity Watch. I think it's like 12 hardcovers. It's a $500 box set of everything 90s cosmic that leads up and – what, is, what does that include? Like, does it include Infinity Gauntlet, like the prequel to Infinity Gauntlet, right? I assume, and then, yeah, like... Yeah, it has the Battle Quest, it has, like, Silver Surfers, uh, you know, the, the rebirth of Thanos that started off, you know, Infinity Quest, and it started off Infinity Gauntlet. Let me look it up real quick. Um, I'm trying to find a listing. And then... Because, I mean, I thought being with that with that price, that $500 retail price, it would also include, like, Infinity War and then move on to the Infinity, um, what was it? What's the last one? Crusade? Yeah. Yeah, it has, all, it has Crusade. It has Infinity War. It has, um, okay, let's see. Here's what's in the Infinity War box set. You know, I'll do it this way to make this more interesting for people watching us. Screen share. Yeah, knock it out of the park there, dude. There it is. All right. All right. So it is, as it shows on here, uh, Finny Gauntlet slipcase, uh, 4,960, so about 5,000 pages for 500 bucks. It includes the Infinity War Gauntlet prequel premiere hardcover. Uh, that's that collects Silver Surfer 34 through 38, issue 40, 44 through 50, and then Thanos Quest 1 through 2. Uh, then it leads into Infinity Gauntlet, which is Infinity Gauntlet 1 through 6. And then it has the Infinity Gauntlet crossover premiere hardcover. This is all the stuff that's in the omnibus that you know you don't really need to read. It's it's cool and interesting and fun, but it really has no nothing to do with the actual storytelling art for Infinity Gauntlet. And then we have Infinity Gauntlet Aftermath, premier hardcover, uh, which is Silver Surfer 60 through 66. Doctor Strange, Sorcerer Supreme 36 
Warlock and Infinity Watch, which is one of the best books ever put out and is completely underrated. Um, then that leads into Infinity War hardcover, which is Infinity War 1 through 6. And then all the crossovers for that in one big hardcover. A second hardcover of Infinity War crossover uh, issues. And then Infinity War Aftermath, with this, which is more Infinity War, or which is more Warlock and the Infinity Watch. Silver Surfer, Warlock Resurrection, Quasar. And then here you go, Omar, the Infinity Crusade, which is one through six of the Infinity Crusade. Warlock Chronicles and Warlock Infinity Watch 18 through 22. There's a lot of great Adam Warlock stuff in this box set too. And then that turns into not one, but two hardcovers for crossover events for Crusade. Now, and then, the box set's uh, going to contain everything that was in the Infinity Gauntlet omnibus, right? It is. That's, that's two separate hardcovers, it looks like. It's yeah. the actual Infinity Gauntlet hardcover. We just and got then, that question, so I wanted to make sure we covered it. No, but it's not good. oversized. Not oversized, these, these correct. Are just, these are just standard size. Standard so if you covers. like oversized artwork, you know. <laughs> so these are like, what, like premier-sized hardcovers, I guess? Yeah, but your thicker. standard tray paperback size. That's it. Yeah. yeah. And then where were we? And then it's the Infinity Gauntlet uh, Companion Premier hardcover as well, which is Thanos Annual, a bunch of what ifs. How many books is that? Ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, whoops, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 books. Yep, 12 uh, standard size hardcovers. For five hundred bucks, um, I'm sure it'll be somewhere around fifty percent off. Hopefully on IST, uh, I'm gonna get it from my local store or from the store I work at. So yeah, we know. Definitely expect some photo bait of that when that hits for sure, and a video, and uh, maybe videos of me with my pants off. And other <laughs> I knew that was coming next. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, Gabe. I like my books big. I like my omnibus. I like my books big too and thick. Those are real oh, weenie books, man. You're not like you're not working your arms out holding one of those little infinity. No, books. I do. I like them. I like them big, thick, and veiny. So speaking of big, it come in a box. Jess, I know you've got this fucking thing. Uh, oh yeah. Oh, you have a little Nemo dude. That thing's bad. Look at that. This fucking thing comes in a suitcase. Yeah, it's right up there. <laughs> I love this thing, man. My, I remember when I got it in the mail, my wife was like, what did you get? She thought I bought like a briefcase. I'm like, no. <laughs> you can Literally. use this briefcase later. Shit, I could like use this if somebody's breaking in and beat them upside the head with it. So yeah, it comes with, you know, the soft cover, like art of things hard to manhandle. And then this is probably the biggest book I have. You look at that thing. Wow. I mean, it's just, that's humongous. So these are all the little Nemo strips and comics. The only thing I have that's bigger than that is this little Nemo book. Is it bigger than this release? Yeah. Are we are we really comparing sizes here? <laughs> This is the biggest book I own, easily. I mean, I can't even fit it all in the. Oh, is that dream another dream? You're right. I think yeah. that is bigger. Yeah. But only, only by like that much. And I guess that much does matter sometimes. It does sometimes. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, that's the, who released that book? That's the collection of the, like, uh. Locust other, Moon Press. That's the other people doing. Little Nemo stories, is that correct? Is that what yeah. that is? Yeah, it's got all these artists and writers doing oh, it. Holy crap. Yeah. I haven't picked that one up. Don't tell me that one's out of print. No, I don't think so. I didn't think it was. Ugh. Yeah, here it is. Yeah, I think it's awesome. Yeah, and it's got it's so great because it's got so many different interpretations oh, <laughs> of Nemo. 
Damn. Look at that ass. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Just spilled Coke all over my keyboard. <laughs> Fucking Nemo. All right. Well, I needed a new keyboard anyway. You guys still there? Yeah, we're here. Okay, I gotta go get paper towels. I'll be right back. <laughs> Carry on. I'm, I'm right, trying to I'm I'm put away this fucking monster of a book. Away. So who did you leave in charge? Is that you, Gabe? Uh, sure. So what's up? All right. Do you have any uh, more box sets? What else you got going on? Um, I mean, I do. Uh, some it's just the ones that he's shown already. I don't have anything like uh, Strangers in Paradise. I've got the soft cover of that, and the bone. I've got the black and white poor man's version of that book, which is really cool. I really like that book. What about you, man? Do you have anything else? Do you have any? Uh... Cause I'm, I'm trying to think of like box sets. I have a lot of movie box sets, but as far as like comics. Not, not really. Other than like he, he, he showed like the Don Rosa stuff, and I've got some of the Carl Bark stuff like that. Yeah, that that one that he had, you said that was the one I should get when it gets reprinted. Yeah, you absolutely should get that book. It's an awesome book, and it's when your kids get older, they will appreciate it too. It's a good read. Damn, you really did spill coke. Oh, At least it wasn't on top. Like, make sure they get on your Strangers in Paradise and that Bone book. <laughs> You'll be asking the group to replace that for you. Yeah, it's the it's the great it's the second flood of coke. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm saving everything. Not everything got wet. Just my computer. That's easily replaced. No, I'm just probably used to it. Yeah, I'm the one that always has technical difficulties and breaks a tooth and spills coke. I'm really kind of a mess. <laughs> You'd think I'd have my act together at this age, but I'm really sort of a fuck up still. Ah, uh, Jess, that's what makes you lovable, buddy. <laughs> are you still are you still able to switch between cameras with with your yeah. keyboard? Yeah, okay. I can. Yeah, it didn't get that part. <laughs> I realized when you left, I'm like, oh man, it's gonna be stuck on like me or Gabe, and one of us <laughs> is not gonna be talking. <laughs> yeah, no, I can still switch. Cool, Actually, cool. this is mopping up pretty quick. My Action figures took the biggest hit. They're dripping wet. I have a big stack of Spider-Man action figures. Maybe you get your house exercised or something. Yeah, it's haunted. Everything smells like Coke now. It's... Not the good kind of Coke either. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody really know what that smells like? <laughs> I've smelled a lot of it in my youth. I don't think you were smelling it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I counts. <laughs> I was just trying to smell it. I too hard. <laughs> That's like uh, I didn't inhale. I just I just sniffed it to see what it smelled like. Okay, so we're I'm back and reasonably back in control. Wait, are you the real Jess? How are you? How are you drinking Coke and not root beer? Uh, I, I was sleepy and I needed to sort of wake up with the caffeine. I knew we'd be on the air for a little while. Wait, root beer does not have caffeine? No, it's caffeine free. No, that's why the Mormons out here drink it all the time. <laughs> huh. Okay. So that was exciting for somebody. Some dump Coke all over the place. Okay. So we were just talking about how jealous we are of some of your box sets. Oh, all right. Well, thanks. I appreciate well, that's it. That's it. Yeah, you have you have a nice collection, man. I didn't. What's a, I didn't get to talk about my eight ball box set or my From Hell box set, and then you, I have Stephen King, the two uh, Dark Tower box sets. Um, that yeah, eight. Yeah. See now, I would buy more of those omnibus format. Like, put five omnibus in a box set that weighs like a hundred pounds. I'm in. <laughs> yeah. 
especially if it's like the Marvel cosmic saga from starting from Annihilation all the way to the Thanos Imperative or whatever the Oh my Rebel gosh, Kings. can you imagine how heavy that thing would be? Hey, they could do it though. Because they know that Mar like if they make it exclusive, the only way to get the Annihilation Omnibus, they know that thing's out of print. Oh my gosh, people would go crazy for that. The fucking thing would be huge. One of the guys I work with at the store just spent two weeks in Australia and found a uh, Annihilation Omnibus for like $70 American. Oh, man, that guy lucked out. Yeah. Surprised they never put that one back into print. It's such a good book. Well, there was that, uh, they did yet again another clearance that had the Annihilation Conquest on there. Yeah. I'm sure. To, wait, so wait. Annihilation Conquest is still in print, though, right? You can just. Yeah, it's still in print. Still get it. But it's. Um, you can, it's just liquidated, so I'm sure you'll see eBay sells for about thirty or something dollars. I would think so. I mean, I forget what I was going for. I put in some orders for some of the other omnibus, mm -hmm. but there's some on that list. I know Thor, Mighty Thor Volume Two, was like ten dollars uh, for retailers. Um, and I know. So just just sent us Hawkeye. The just, Hawkeye. Just just sent us. Yeah. Just just sent us a message saying his computer shorted out. Oh no! That was on. We got a Facebook message from Jess. Um, so are we still live? Yeah, no, we're still on. It looks like. Um, oh, we have huh. to fin we'll finish this up pretty soon because it seems to be a disaster. <laughs> uh, I could just log Man. in and close it out. Yeah, poor guy. I hope his computer's okay. Um, yeah, I remember the liquidation sales they had a few years ago. That's where I got like, yeah, Secret Warriors for like thirty dollars, and then the Remender Punisher for thirty dollars, and I think uh, Tales of Tales of, uh, until Tales of Spider Man that was also like twenty something dollars. So if you wait for liquidation sales, there's always a guy on eBay that has them for about twenty five to thirty bucks if you can't make it to a convention, because there's always guys at the cons. Um, there's always a table at a con. I just have like super like blown out prices on omnibus i remember when the Fanny gauntlet was like that that's how i got mine no actually i got mine when it first came out yeah i was gonna but say i, I pre-ordered my infinity gauntlet yeah i remember seeing it on uh at conventions on tables for like you know 50 60 bucks not too long ago um yeah there's always a guy at, at cons that will sell those things really cheap No, oh, fucking justice thing is all fucked up, man. I feel bad. Yeah, the Remender Punisher was thirty bucks during like the liquidation sale. They had a bunch of them, like John of uh, John Mar. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Warlord of Mars. I uh, can't remember some of the other ones. Pretty much the ones that nobody really picked up. Yeah, last year I picked up um, Annihilation Conquest. I think it was like fifty bucks. I picked up. Uh, the you could have gotten it for fifty bucks if you pre-ordered it, dude. I know, but I wasn't. I didn't. Have oh, you weren't into the. I have an cosmic stuff. Thing, so, what up, Jess? Okay, I'm back on my phone. Hey, sorry about that. Is your computer okay? No, that's it's the fried. main concern. It's totally fried. Seriously? Yeah, it won't turn oh, on. Oh, dude, what do you have? I have a MacBook Pro. Oh shit! Yeah, I, I've how tried, old is it? Uh, five years old. Well, it just made the sound. Maybe it will turn on. But that's um, a good noise. Yeah, we were gonna wrap it up since you were gone, man. <laughs> well, it's probably a good time to wrap it up anyway. <laughs> Who's in charge right now? Like, I don't even see like the end call button anymore. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, that's what. That's why I thought as soon as I as my computer crashed, I thought that. Uh, I thought that would end the call. Uh, we'll figure it out. This, yeah, this may be the show that never ends. We could do that. We're yeah, just no, it's it's not turning on. Oh, dude, I'm so sorry. It sucks. I was gonna say usually Apple is pretty good about you know helping people out if your kids spill something on there. Yeah, but yours is five years old. They might tell you to go somewhere else. Yeah. 
I may have to um sell it. I may have to get a new one. I still have Coke dripping out of it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like the disaster master. Man, you should have stuck to root beer, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I should have. It would never that was treat me this bad. Yeah, root beer was angry at me, so it it uh, it got back at me this way. Okay. Did you want to ask questions, answer any questions, or are we ready to sign off? We can do questions if everybody's still okay. Do we still have viewers? Uh, yeah, no, they, they all left when you left, and then. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. All right. Question <laughs> answer time. Question answer time for the Omni Bros on this episode of Omnibus Collector's Disaster. It was almost le- <laughs> it was almost legit Omni Bros, too, with Luis just showing up out of nowhere. I know. That was funny. That By the end of his call, that skipper cap was way down on his face. <laughs> I think it was posted, man. That guy's lit. Yeah. Yeah. It was, he was wearing that hat low. Homeboy was freaking. Ooh, Omnibus hey, reprint wish hey, list. Man. Omnibus wish list, reprint wish list. What's on your top list? Damn. Uh, Jess owns everything, so I don't think he would care. Yeah, I'm cool. Wow. <laughs> um, I'm fine. I'm trying to think of you know I have everything that I want, but what what did I miss that I might get if they do a reprint? Uh, maybe maybe the Silver Surfer. Right, that's mm. awesome. That's one of my top ones, especially because the first one is like glued binding and it's kind of shitty, like binding wise. Um, somebody's asking any recommended mangas to start with manga. Uh, Uzumaki. Uzumaki is amazing, by the way. 20th century. Anything Urasawa does, 20th century boys. Monster. Monster's a awesome one. Uh, if you're if you do have a problem reading right to left, you can find the old Akira prints. And those are all left to right in traditional American reading style. But also uh, Blade of the Immortal from Dark Horse. And what they did with with uh, Blade of the Immortal that was really cool was instead of doing a mirror mirror flipping image of it, they cut out uh, the panels to glue onto the page and printed them that way. So the panels are not out of sequence. So, or the pl- panels are in sequence and they're also not mirrored, right? So the guys that are right-handed aren't left-handed. It was really cool how they did that. Um, 